one, just people knowing what we mean by, you know, open, so as we said, open science, explicit open science, i.e. license your stuff. So I think that better tools, so, and, and, and some people say, you know, funders could say it's a default. I mean, you know, so there are the kind of, there's carrots and sticks. So carrot is just people knowing about it. I think a bunch of people, you know, let's call the alpha adopters, who just if they knew it would probably do it. And, you know, we're working on that. That's what the working group on open science, the OKF does or whatever, um, you know, and one could certainly just with, like it's completely unfunded if we had a little bit of money even for that there's a lot more um, there's a lot more there's a lot more you know there's just with a very small amount of money there's a lot more doing it there's very few people the people at the moment going around telling people about open science tend to be you know basically doing it in their own time and um, with little coordination that even a small amount of coordination there can make it go a long way you, know, you could just write a glossy A4 P, you know, PDF and give it to people and tell them what open science is, which I don't think we've even yet done, but it's very obvious. Um, um, so I think, I think there's just telling people, you know, telling people what the pattern principles are, telling them what open science is. Um, I think kind of there's that, there's, there's kind of the other intensity, which is some better tools. So if you want to put out data, um, I think there's kind of, then on the kind of stick or carrot stick aspect of it is, I think it would be, you know, journals and funders could get much, they could say, right, if we're funding stuff, it's going to be open data, you know, in the way that, for example, JISC, at least in its projects now, really requires open source, I think it should require open content and open data. And by the way, that doesn't mean Creative Commons, that means open, that's the set of, you know, that's, like, you know, not all Creative Commons licenses are open or whatever, so I think that could be required, like, you know, be it at JISC or at funding agencies, you know, they could just, you know, if every funding agency in the UK, like National Funding Agency, simply said, we you must do open access or we don't fund you, guess what would happen? Or, you know, you must deposit or you must deposit data in this way. Now, obviously, for that to work, they need to have somewhere they can deposit data uh, um, and they need someone to deposit publications. I mean, the publication thing is relatively easy. It kind of, it's very easy to, you know, you can put on your website, for God's sake. But I think for the data, it's slightly a little bit more challenging. And the other thing, though, is not just you need someone to deposit. You want to start finding ways, and, you know, again, we're doing this with CCAN, that, that, that's useful. I mean, just depositing a huge bunch of data, it could be very useless. You need to find ways, you know, rate that's which good, you know, have a bit of a quality assessment. Does it even have a readme, a documentation? Maybe just even have people, you know, maybe, you know, maybe have some way to kind of, you know, check, you know, check that, you know, the, you know, 50 people are what, you know, in software, you know, these number of people are watching this repository. So who's watching this data set? The other thing I think would maybe be recognition for producing data sets per se. And that could be very interesting. It's been talked about an awful lot, and it's about citation data sets, all kinds of stuff. But basically, at the moment, it would be really nice to separate producing data from writing publications. But at the moment, almost all the kudos and the credit formerly in the profession you know, tracks to writing the paper. And producing a really great data set you know, is only a precursor to doing that. And changing that so that was explicitly recognized might be, would be another really interesting thing. That's kind of a, a more medium term thing as it involves Chain, quite significant changes maybe in you know or creating pseudo papers for data sets or something like that yeah so carrots and sticks yeah. I, I mean I, I'd like a way that with like one click I can share data sets I would like to have people be able to kind of collaborate online to clean up transform data sets and analyze them um, you know that world is coming um, I, you know, I, I would like with, you know, one click be able to, you know, a classic thing in doing economics or anything else is deflation, you know, deflate something. So, you know, I have house prices over time, but they'll just show that maybe they've gone up, but a lot of that might be just to do with inflation. So I want to know what's called real house prices, i.e. house prices minus inflation or minus GDP growth. And if I, you know, it's not hard in this world to just say, I've got two data sets, I hit a button and bam, they get, or, you know, I've got a data set, deflate it for me and it just deflates it. Those, that day is coming, but that's the kind of thing I would like to see. I'd like to see a world in which I can, I, whether I'm not an academic, or whether I'm an academic or I'm not, can get access to most of you know, the world's research that's gone on. There's just no reason that publicly funded research shouldn't be openly available to everybody, um, really. Um, and I, I just don't see why that, that, isn't, you know, that isn't the case. Um, you know, and just the possibility, even things now like JSTOR, there are you know, amazing projects, don't get me wrong, it's kind of club funded. But JSTOR did all the text OCRing, and they've now got some system where you can maybe get stuff out of their OCR. You can kind of get an API access to the back end, but they didn't put out the text things that they did, maybe because of, I don't know, because of the restrictions of the deals they had with the publishers. But that kind of stuff, you know, just access to the raw text. You know, why, why was it a big deal that Google's engrams, like there was a paper a year ago, they got all of the stuff in Google Books and done the analysis on 
I remember thinking about that, you know, two, three years ago, and I'm sure lots of other people did, that you could do that, and I had a data set here of titles of books. But why, you know, to be frank, it wasn't a hugely conceptual idea. Why did it only happen last year? Well, because Google had access to all the books, they'd done all these deals, and they did, they did that paper then with some people. Great, but there's no reason that couldn't have been done by a load of people before, and it can't be reproduced by anyone else because they don't have access really to Google's system or API, and that's to do with, a lot of that is to do with intellectual property restrictions on the underlying content. I mean, obviously that's more complex than that. That's like all books and there's a lot of copyright restrictions. But for public research, why isn't just all of that available for people to do those kind of analyses or, you know, trends, what's going on? You can just imagine so many things even just, you know, that would just be interesting, just even as both research and as guidance to policymakers. You know, what, what topics are trending up? Where are they going? What do patterns of, what does it look like when new disciplines emerge? All of this kind of stuff. And you need access to the, to the literature just to do that even kind of quite, hardcore, you know, bibliometric, scientometric analysis. And that's something I'm personally very interested in, so that's, I particularly like it. Anyway, yeah. Well, right, so very specific things. I said funding bodies should, re should mandate open access. Uh, they should mandate open data. They should say, we're funding you we're losing, we're losing, we're, we, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're really losing a lot of bang for our, you know, we're losing bang for our buck by not doing that. And we're, it's upfront funded, you know, we're funding, we're funding the people who do the review, we're funding the research initially. I mean, obviously there's kind of now partnerships with business and so on, but you know, even there, I don't see why stuff is going to get published eventually. If it's going to be a journal article, so it's going to be public anyway, then why can't it be open access? So I think ma those kind of mandates, I would suggest some funding bodies um, do some kind of prototyping or early funding of some of the things that I've, you know, some of the tools. I mean, I could enumerate those kind of tools, but for me, they're things around like CCAN, this kind of data management system, you know, may, and, and the things that might plug into that. You know, I can imagine what I call the data deck, um, you know, kind of like you have tweet deck or whatever, you know, a data deck that plugs into something like CCAN or my machine, and I just hit, you know, upload, pull down, you know, package up, or whatever. Um, I think you can have some funding into that. I mean, at the moment, and I don't mean data repositories necessarily here. I mean, okay, storage is useful, but it's it's not really the part. It's the tools around it that's important. Um, fund small stuff more, like in these kind of experimental things. And I think give explicit recognition. I mean, this is a hard, or longer term thing, but explicit. So we're talking about mandates, but also recognition for doing it. You know, recognition for doing really good open data. You know, and and, and you know maybe recognition for publishing data sets versus just publishing papers. Right, well, I guess for the magic wand, I'd say every, every, both past and future, scientific and social science, well, you know, research publication would be digital, online, for, you know, for everyone to access. Um, and that, by the way, involves a lot of digitization. That's one of the costs that people do have to recoup is the digitization cost. Um, going back, so one of the reasons is it's sometimes difficult. But that would be, more, you know, I think magic wand. That would be it. I mean, um, second, I guess it would be you know some what I what I call a data hardware, data management. So be somewhere where I could just you know explore <laughs> seamlessly. Kind of go give give me GDP for US quarterly from fifty four to sixty eight or whatever. Give me this other thing and just you know now show me the graph or whatever. Uh, now run the regression. I think that now that's just a long. That's actually just really hard. It's much harder than it seems conceptually when you say it. Um, but I, we're, we're getting there, and things like CCAN are going to help make that a reality, I hope. But I, I think the biggest one, the magic one, would just be to have all that material that so far man's accumulated, and you know, humankind, I should say, humankind's accumulated, you know, scientific knowledge is largely encapsulated now in pub, you know, publications. Um, you print, well, you know, and have all of that digital, all of that available. Um, and also because the things you could build with it, you know, you could all interlink it all. You could allow people to, you know, I'd say, show me my friend's footnote, show me my friend's interlinking. You know, you have a project called Annotator about it, you know, just, you know, there's no, why is the web not, web not writable on? Why can't I write on it? Why can't I not annotate it? You know, maybe, obviously I can't write on it so everyone can see it, but so my friends could show me, you know, Rufus's um, annotation to this. Show me Rufus's linkages between this paper. Show me the paper that Rufus recommends when you read this, or maybe not Rufus, but, you know, <laughs> you know, whoever. Um, so I think I think I think those things would be, would happen very quickly once we had open access to all, all that material. Okay. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want to say to these 
policymakers well remember what open me the open open equals the open definition freedom to use reuse and redistribute that's all if you, that's all you take from this that's what you mean by open and let's you know that's what the scientific community in some sense is implicitly about let's make it explicitly happen